For today's episode, we shall be covering unadjusted trial balance, the related adjusting entries, adjusted trial balance, and an example of it through spreadsheet presentation. For illustration purposes, we shall make use of the same assumptions we had under our discussion for the accounting equation, which is part 3 of basic accounting. In the said episode we discussed the various transactions of Sarah's Mini Mart, a grocery company owned by Ms. Sarah Smith. We also prepared the corresponding journal entries to record the various transactions as well as the unadjusted trial balance. For our review, this is the first part of the unadjusted trial balance, which as you can see shows you the balance sheet accounts from cash in bank account up to retained earnings account. You will note that I have included here all the other account titles in anticipation of the adjusting entries that we will have to take up in preparing the adjusted trial balance. This is the second part of the unadjusted trial balance, which as you can see shows you the income statement accounts from revenue, sales account up to non-operating expense, which in this example is interest expense. You will note that I have included here all the other account titles in anticipation of the adjusting entries that we will have to take up in preparing the adjusted trial balance. As discussed in our previous episode when we took up unadjusted trial balance, we need to prepare the complete and accurate adjusting entries before we can prepare the adjusted trial balance as this is the reason or essence of being the so-called the trial balance of adjusted balances as differentiated from the unadjusted trial balance which we presented earlier. The following are the adjusting entries that we have prepared, inclusive of the book reconciling items which were identified after preparing the bank reconciliation statement covering September 1-30, 2020 transactions, number 1 to record depreciation expense for the laptop, number 2 to record amortization expense for leasehold improvement, number 3 to record insurance premium for one year starting September 1, 2020, number 4 to record unused store supplies at the end of the month. Number 5 to record deposit of $1,000 dated September 3rd per bank statement. Number 6 to record $3,000 proceeds of bank loan with a promissory note dated September 8th. Number 7 to record $50 bank service charge for loan processing. Number 8 to record $2,000 treasury bills placement dated September 10th to earn interest of 3% PA. Number 9 to record $25 cost of one check booklet. Number 10 to record September 29, direct deposit of customer's account of $700. Number 11 to record September 30, deposit of $5,000 by Ms. Smith. Number 12 to record September 30, partial payment of $2,000 bank loan. Number 13 to record $9.17 interest on $3,000 bank loan. Number 14 to record $3.33 accrued interest income on $2,000 treasury bills placement. Number 15 to record XYZ Inc.'s invoice number 234 for furniture and fixtures worth $2,000 which was bought on credit on August 29, 2020. Number 16 to record $33.33 depreciation expense of furniture and fixture for September 2020. All of these adjusting entries will be recorded in the general journal and posted to the general ledger of each of the accounts. The summary balances of these adjusting entries shall also be posted per account to the corresponding column in the spreadsheet. This is the first part of the spreadsheet for the unadjusted trial balance, which as you can see also shows you the separate column for the summary of adjusting entries. This first part is comprised of the balance sheet accounts only as we cannot show you the complete parts due to space constraints. The total debit column of the unadjusted trial balance plus the debit column of the adjusting entries will comprise the total debit column of the adjusted trial balance. The total credit column of the unadjusted trial balance plus the credit column of the adjusting entries will comprise the total credit column of the adjusted trial balance. This is the second part of the spreadsheet for the unadjusted trial balance, which as you can see also shows you the separate column for the summary of adjusting entries. This second part is comprised of the income statement accounts only as again, we cannot show you the complete parts due to space constraints. The total debit column of the unadjusted trial balance plus the debit column of the adjusting entries will comprise the total debit column of the adjusted trial balance. The total credit column of the unadjusted trial balance plus the credit column of the adjusting entries will comprise the total credit column of the adjusted trial balance. 
This is the first part of the spreadsheet for the adjusted trial balance, which as you can see also shows you the separate column for the total debit and total credit as well as the separate column for net debit and net credit column. Take note the net debit and net credit balances you see in the last two columns shall comprise the balances when you prepare the balance sheet which shall be our topic or subject in our next episode. This is the second part of the spreadsheet for the adjusted trial balance, which as you can see also shows you the separate column for the total debit and total credit as well as the separate column for net debit and net credit column. Take note the net debit and net credit balances you see in the last two columns shall comprise the balances when you prepare the income statement which shall be our topic or subject in our forthcoming episodes. For those who would want a copy of the complete detailed assumptions, journal entries, general ledger, and spreadsheets of the different books of accounts up to the adjusted trial balance. Just send an email request to lusvaminda.lruero at gmail.com.